do you know what diamond problem in java is well this question was actually asked in the interview at synecron hi guys welcome back to my channel java interview buddy so in this video i am going to share some real interview questions shared by one of her subscriber her name is kavita so kavita recently faced an interview at synecron and she years of experience she shared all the questions with us so in this video i will go through each question one by one and explain them in a simple way if you need to appear any interview recently these answers will be very helpful for you and if you also face any interviews recently please share your questions with us you can fill out the form in the description so it is really helping others as well all right so let's start the video the first question we are having is what is the diamond problem in java and how does java address it now to answer this you can say something like this java does not support multiple inheritance with classes because it creates ambiguity when two parents classes have the same method so this situation is called the diamond problem java avoids this by allowing multiple inheritance only through interfaces if two interfaces have the same default method the implementing classes must override it so java solves the ambiguity by forcing you to provide your own implementation and if you answer this perfectly that there are chances that you may get a follow up question something like what if two interfaces have default methods with the same name if you know the answer of this question you can write down in the comment section i will pin that comment as a top comment and by the way guys questions like these are already available in my interview preparation kit so if you want all the questions all the answer in a single go and you need to prepare for the interviews you can check the description of this video or any other of my video all right so now let's move to the next question next question is a programming question write a java program to reverse a string without using string inbuilt function so let me share my screen and solve this write a java program to reverse a string without using string inbuilt function so i have addressed this question in multiple of my other videos as well so here i will quickly explain you what i'm going to do so here how you can answer this so first i will reverse the string manually using a loop first i convert the string into a character array then i iterate from the last index to the first index while looping i append each character to a new string so let me just show you by the code so i will create a input string called input uh, i will say hello then i will convert this uh, string to a char array input dot to char array method i will use and converted this string into array of characters then to receive the reverse string i will create a variable as well uh, it will be empty so it will collect the reverse string then to reverse it i will use a loop for loop and start it with the int i is equal to cares dot length minus 1 i is greater than equal to 0 i minus minus and inside the loop i will have this reversed is equal to reversed plus char at i index so basically i am iterating from the last character and collecting it in the reverse so o will be collected in the reverse then l will be collected in the reverse then l will be collected then e then h so it will be reverse at the end so i will print as well the reverse string i will print as well and i will run this program to check if i am able to solve this or not why there is error cats okay now let's run this again so yeah it is reverse now and this works because string in java are indexed so by looping backward we built a string in reverse order and one important point for the interview this solution is fine for understanding logic but string concatenation inside a loop is not a optimal solution because string is immutable right so in real project we use string builder but since the question is about logic and not the performance optimization i am using string here now moving to our next question all right so uh, we will move to our next question which is uh, given a list of integers find the maximum value element present in it using stream function so this is basically a stream api coding question so let's solve it let, let me share my screen and i will solve it. so our question is given a list of integers find the maximum value element present in it using stream function so this question we need to solve using stream api and for that i have uh, created a main method inside this class and i will create a list of numbers as well so i will uh, i will quickly create a list of integers 
I will call this list numbers and I have certain values as well like 3, 9, 2, 7, 5 these are integers available inside this list now we need to find the maximum we need to find the maximum value using stream api so it is a very simple question basically so first i convert this list into a stream okay and then i use max function uh, with a comparator yeah that's it that's what we need to do so i will use uh, i will first convert that number list into a stream and then i will use a function called max and inside that i will use a comparator and comparator i i will provide something like this so basically comparator has this compare to method so i will pass a and b and try to compare the values and get them uh, maximum then finally i will use this get method to get that value and uh, here i will catch i mean i will collect this inside integer max and finally i will print the value as well print the output as well the output is in max so i will print max just print it let's just check if it is working or not so yeah it is working it works because max this max function internally iterates over the stream and keeps tracks on the largest element based on the comparator so max return an optional max this if you check this max it returns an optional okay so because the list could be empty as well so that's why it, it is returning optional so that is why we are using that get, this get method uh, from the optional and it in real project it is safer to handle using or else or or else or else throw method so we can write the same thing like this as well so i will comment this out and i will say int max is equal to numbers dot stream dot max inside max i will pass compare to method and then i will use or else zero if there is no maximum then give zero so this is the simplest approach this is kind of a simple and clean and interview friendly as well so i will run this again and as you can see after running it is giving the maximum output so that is correct so i hope you have got the idea how to solve this question in the interview let's move to the next question after a java coding question there is a question which is what is the difference between young generation and old generation memory spaces so this question is related to memory management of java and here how you can explain this in any of your interview so first thing is young generation talking about young generation young generation stores short-lived object so it include eden and survival spaces and here whenever garbage collection happens it happens very frequently but it happens very fast and if i talk about old generation old generation stores long-lived object and garbage collection here is less frequent but it takes more time and if the old generation fills up it can cause performance issue with your application let's move to the next question which is can you describe a scenario where you would use wait and notify methods in a thread communication now this question is from a very interesting topic threads and to answer this you can say something like this so wait and notify these are used when two thread needs coordination with each other for example one thread is producing data and another thread is consuming it if the buffer is empty the consumer should wait when the producer adds new data it should call notify to wake up the consumer and these method always needs a synchronized block because they act on an intrinsic lock all right i hope you don't forget this answer in your interview as well and we are moving to the next question our next question is from the core java again and it is a very important question the question is why it is important to override the hash code method when you override equals what would be consequences if we don't this is a very important question you need to listen the answer very carefully and i hope you don't forget this answer in your interviews as well so you can explain it something like this equals and hash code must be consistent for hash map hash set and hash table to work correctly if two objects are equal according to the equals method they must have the same hash code and if you override equals but not does not override hash code the object may not be found in the hash best collection and it can break searching storing deleting operation so that is why it is very important to override both equals and hash code and as a follow-up question you may get something like this like what happen if two unequal objects have the same hash code so i hope you will write the answer in the comment section the best comment can get a discount coupon up to 50% of my interview preparation kit.
Now let's move to the next question, which is you have a singleton bean that needs to be thread safe. What approaches would you take to ensure its thread safety? As a preliminary, you should know how to create a singleton class, a singleton bean. If you know that, you will understand the answer of this question as well. If a bean performs stateful operation, we need synchronization, right? So we make the method synchronized or we can use volatile or double check locking or another option is using thread safe classes like atomic variables. So if the bean is stateless, it's naturally thread safe and need no extra work. So basically it depends on how bean perform. It is performing and guys quick reminder. Okay. So if you faced any interviews recently, please share your questions with us. You can fill out the form in the description and also comment it out. Like should I continue the series of mock interview session? Now let's move to the next question, which is what is the role of an API gateway in microservices? So it, it is a tough question for a beginner. microservices but if you mention certainly if you mention microservices in your resume the chances are you can get this question this type of question whatever you write in your resume is very important so write only those things which you are familiar with which you can perfectly answer so if you get this question like what is the role of an api gateway in microservices you can say that uh, an api gateway sits in front of all microservices so it routes incoming request to the correct service and it also handles cross-cutting concerns like authentication like rate limiting uh, like logging and it also helps reduce directly communication between the client and the service so this make the architecture cleaner and easier to maintain so be very careful while preparing your resume I have also provided how you should create your resume in my interview preparation kit so you can get help from there as well but make sure whatever you know keep only those things keep only those topics don't keep unnecessary topics otherwise it will be scattered and you will get answer you will get the question from here and there from the unknown topics or the topics you can't prepare in a week or in a month so that's why keep your resume short and crisp and clean because in the resume there was microservices we are getting a lot of question from the microservices so next question is also from the microservices which is how do microservices communicate with each other now microservices can communicate with two ways one is synchronized way and one is asynchronized way so if i talk about synchronized communication it uses rest REST API or GRPC, whether the asynchronous communication uses message queues like Kafka or RabbitMQ. So synchronize is immediate, but it increased tight coupling, but asynchronous is more scalable and fault tolerance. So that means if suppose if you are using Kafka or RabbitMQ, you can get the message in the queue and you are consuming those messages you don't have a pressure to produce the result at the same moment but in the asynchronous communication you have to give the result at the same moment whenever you are getting that message or getting that request understood and that is why asynchronous is more scalable now coming to the next question which is what is the difference between fetch type eager and fetch type lazy this is a question from spring data jpa you can answer it something like this so if i talk about eager fetch eager fetch loads the related entity immediately when the main entity is loaded and lazy fetch loads the related entity only when you access it so for example an employee object is there so employee object is your main entity so in that case in the case of eager eager fetch eager fetch loads the entire employee object and if sometime you have address or other details as well other objects as well inside that employee object all will be loaded in the same instance but while using the lazy fetch it will only load the employee details it won't fetch the details which are inside the employee object also eager can cause performance issue if there are many relationship lazy gives better performance but it can fail if the session is closed choosing between them depends on how the data is used now coming to our next question which is what is the difference between inner join and outer join so inner join returns only the matching rows from both the tables and if there are no matches the row is skipped outer join return all the rows from one or both tables even if there are no matched so it will give the com complete detail and if there are missing values it will fill those values with the null and outer join is useful when you need 
unmatched data as well next question is what is the difference between where and having clause this is also a question from dbms and here how you can answer this question so where is applied before grouping and it filters uh, individual rows and having is applied after grouping and it filters the groups where cannot work with aggregate functions like sum or uh, any other aggregate function having works with aggregate because it runs after group by so both are used for filtering but at different stages and coming to the moving to the next question which is what is ec2 and why do we use it now ec2 is a part of aws it is a kind of a virtual server which is provided by aws it allows you to run application on cloud based machines so you can choose cpu memory storage os and it is also scalable it is reliable and it is easy to configure basically we use ec2 instance to deploy our uh, services our backend services mainly our apis or our uh, batch jobs so while working in a system where we we are hoping that we would scale and there would be multiple instances we need to run of our application so instead of are uh, running the in houses servers we would go for a cloud servers server so aws is a service provided for that and ec2 is also a part of that now moving to our next question which is what is moketo and why it is used in unit testing now writing the unit test cases is very important when you are working in a develop so there are multiple tools available for writing the unit test cases like moketo is one of them there is rest assured there is test ng there is spring provided j units j unit 5 and spring provided test as well so i have already mentioned these in in my interview preparation kit and this question is specifically for moketo so here how you can answer this so moketo is basically a framework it is a framework mocking framework basically for java it helps you to create fake objects so you can test your a code in isolation so you can mock dependencies like services repository and apis and it also allowed to verify method call and define expected behavior so this makes unit test cases faster simpler and reliable as well now moving to our next question which is from core java why is string immutable so string is immutable for security reasons so basically it prevents someone from changing values used in class loading or file paths it also enables caching and makes string thread safe so basically that value never change and immutability improves performance and stability as well now moving to our next question which is from spring boot what is the difference between controller and rest controller so if i talk about controller controller annotation is used for web pages and return views like jsp or uh, theme leaf and if i talk about rest controller rest controller returns data directly usually in json format so rest controller annotation is basically controller annotation plus response body annotation and it is used for rest api while controller is used when ui is involved when you want to return view as a object so yeah that was it from this uh, interview or this video i hope these questions and answer will help you a lot in your upcoming interviews and if you like this video make sure to subscribe our channel and share it with your friends as well who are preparing for interviews and don't forget if you want to share your own interview questions and if you want to like get interview preparation kit you can check the description and i will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching